It's my 35th birthday in Tokyo, and it's the last game of the season. It's championship day, and I've been playing for Team Toyota for the last eight years. And I'm the leading hitter on the team, and this season is going perfect, you guys. The last out is made, Toyota wins its fifth championship in eight seasons. And that's what we do every single game in Japan. We line up on the line, and we look up into the crowd, and we bow. We always bow. But we do this to show appreciation, and we do this to show thanks. And on this particular day, we just won a championship. So my teammates were holding hands, and they're like jumping up and down, going crazy, but I am stuck. I'm stuck on this line, and I'm looking into this red sea of Toyota fans and their red gear, and I'm looking up, and the highlight reel starts to play. And I start to think about when I was just five years old, and I first stepped onto a softball field, and I instantaneously fell in love with this game. I go back to thinking about living out my lifelong dream of becoming an Olympian and winning a gold medal in 2004 and then continuing on in 2008 and having the chance to still represent my country and win, winning a silver. But as I'm standing there on the line, bawling and crying, I'm done. I've done everything in this game that I possibly could have wanted to do, and I have attained the highest goal in this game. I am ready to move on. So after weeks of being back home in my home in Los Angeles, I am free. <laughs> I am free, you guys. <laughs> I don't have to wake up to an alarm. I don't have a practice to go to, and I do not have a coach telling me what he thinks, he or she thinks that I need to work on that off season. I don't have to listen to nobody. <laughs> and so now, instead of waking up, which I routinely do, and wake up and go to the gym, now I'm waking up and I'm eating pancakes for breakfast. <laughs> I'm binge watching Netflix all day long. I'm not even leaving my house. My new uniform now is sweats and my leopard slippers. <laughs> That's my new uniform. And I just get to just, this is my time. This is the first time in my life that I get to dictate my own time. I get to make my own decisions. And I am loving it. I may or may not take showers in this time, but I'm just, I'm so content and happy. And so, I start to think, like, I'm just so excited that I have nowhere to be. But at the same time, I'm extremely sad because I have nowhere to be. And so I start to think, what's next? I'm not a Kobe Bryant, <laughs> I'm not a Michael Jordan, and I'm not living off of my endorsements. And as many of you may think, oh, man, winning a gold medal, that's really cool. But that doesn't、uh, walk you into an abundance of opportunities, fame, and wealth. I started to not know who I was. And maybe there was a time in your life where you didn't know who you were. Maybe you lost a job, you got a divorce, you're losing a whole life of,、uh, that was behind you. And maybe you graduated school. But I knew who I was my entire life. I was Natasha Watley, the softball player. And now I'm Natasha Watley, the retired softball player. All of this time that I was cooped up in my house, being alone and being by myself and being in my thoughts, I was grieving a person that I had been. That had been. And now I was making space for the person that I wanted to become. And so I think about <laughs> now I have to get a J O B. <laughs> I gotta get a job, you guys. What am I gonna do? <laughs> I think, okay. Yes, winning a gold medal is so cool. And yes, Thanksgiving, Christmas, I am the, the star of the family、um, for that year only. And then the next Thanksgiving, Christmas, like I'm forgotten.、Uh, like nobody really cares. I'm at the Thanksgiving gathering. And so I start to think at 35, everybody else is in the middle of their career. And I just stopped a career and now I've got to start all over again. This makes no kind of sense. I have no marketable skills, and、uh, beyond that, I don't even know what I want to do. And so I start to think, what am I good at? And maybe you've been here before, like, what am I good at? Have I wasted all this time? And now I'm thinking, did I just waste 30 years for just a round circle of metal? Did I just waste 30 years for that? So now I think I have to surround myself with other people so that they can bring out to me what I'm good at. And, I, and come to find out, I'm good at all sorts of other things. And maybe you, in a prior life, you were a cheerleader, maybe in high school, maybe you were a dancer, 
Maybe you um, raised some babies, maybe you've argued in courtrooms, but wouldn't you agree that whatever you've done in your past that you've acquired some um, valuable skills, would you agree? So when I look back on what I've done, I thought, hmm, I was just a softball player. I'm really good at hitting this thing called slap hitting in our game in softball. I'm really fast runner. I can get down to first base really, really, really fast. And I'm thinking, okay, what else am I good at? Maybe there are some other good things that I'm good at. But as I search the internet, and I'm gonna tell you, there's no Google ads that say former Olympian needed, no former athlete needed that can wake up at 7 a.m., who can do 10 plus pull-ups and can get to first base in under three seconds. I have scrubbed the internet. <laughs> it is not there. Trust me, don't even look for it. But once I circled around in the community of people, what they brought out in me is that they showed me that I am a leader. And I'm like, I'm a leader. I don't think that I'm a leader. To me, a leader is that person that just is loving the spotlight. That's not me. I'm super shy, I'm super quiet, and I'm super reserved. And how can a leader be someone who is just out in the forefront? But they said, hey, Natasha, weren't you a veteran on the team? Didn't you have underclassmen that looked up to you? Okay, yes, maybe I did. I did have people that looked up to me. Well, you led in your own right. You led by example, you led by action, you led by how you competed. Okay, I'll give you that. I was a leader, okay. Teamwork, I, okay, I got that. Cause I've been on the team my whole darn life on championship teams at that. But I had to compete with people that I probably wouldn't necessarily hang out with outside the white lines. So that's gotta speak for something. I mean, now I'm checking balls at maybe somebody that maybe I might not wanna be around. And I gotta trust that they catch this ball. And maybe I might want it to hit them or not. You know, I'm not evil. But in vice versa, they gotta chuck a ball at me and maybe they don't trust me or maybe we're not the best, the best of friends, but we gotta compete because we got this common goal that we're working towards. We're trying to win. Teamwork, okay, I got that. Discipline, okay. Three decades of discipline and diets and nutrition and workouts and not having a so what you called normal life. I miss so many friends' weddings, I've missed childbirths, I've missed so many family gatherings. Yes, I dedicated a whole entire life to playing this game and being the best that I possibly could. But on top of being disciplined, it's learning how to keep your cool, learning how to take feedback. And when we talk about feedback, I had to take a lot of feedback to prepare for the speech. So I did have to tap into that skill and being consistent and showing up consistently over 30 years. And when you talk about consistency, you've got to show up on the days that you just got kicked in the gut. You gotta come back and you gotta be consistent, not just show up, but you gotta show up at this top, top level over and over and over and over and over and over again. So I'm starting to think, okay, what am I gonna do next? I created my own ad in my own job description on what that looked like. A coach and a mentor to young athletes. An inspirational speaker on spreading the awareness on underserved girls and why it's so important for them to be active and play sports. But I wasn't able to do this alone. And what I needed to do was I needed to build new muscles. I needed to find my own tribe. I found my own tribe. I reached out to mentors, business coaches, nonprofit leaders. I surrounded myself with like-minded people. I joined a group here of a woman executive group here in San Diego, and I still make this drive from, I live in Los Angeles, to San Diego every single month is because it's what I needed. And I will admit I was extremely intimidated because this group is a group of wildly successful women in business. And I would show up to these meetings and I'd be like, I'm just an athlete, like what the heck am I doing here? Why am I here? <laughs> but I will tell you what these women did, they went above and beyond to show me that I am enough. And in those places that I had gaps, they supported me and maybe gave me a little bit of knowledge in the areas that I didn't know. So it was so important to have my tribe of people. I had to stay humble because mind you, on the softball field, I feel really good and the hardest and the coldest and the hardest of days, like I'm able to adapt, but now I'm in boardrooms where I'm having to negotiate a partnership. Like I don't even know the first thing about even running a board. Now I have a board. I don't know what to do. <laughs> and now I'm having to keep my cool. And sometimes I'm not even understanding the things that these people are saying. So I'm actually having to raise my hand and say, I don't understand. I had to give myself grace. And sometimes we just, sometimes we just have to give ourselves grace. We don't have to know everything. 
I had to take inc incremental action. And what I did is I set up a meeting once a month, and I did this regularly. And honestly, like sometimes I would set meetings up with somebody who connected me to somebody, and I didn't know where this meeting was gonna lead, but I needed reps. And I, that's what we do in sports, we take reps. So I just needed reps to be able to articulate myself, to be able to speak to somebody. And I just did this regularly, not even knowing where this was gonna go. Write a ton of books, bought a lot of online courses on marketing and sales and all these different things that I probably am not gonna even use, but I did it just to take action. So you ask, what does life after gold look like? Well, I'm an Olympian and I'm still a work in progress on what that looks like. I'm building a life that I'm designing that works for me. And what I've learned is that life after gold looks really similar to life before gold. I'm just applying it in a different way. I'm using teamwork, leadership, discipline, consistency to pave the way for young girls to become leaders in this world. And I bet that you have worked towards something that represents gold in your life. You've overcome something to be here in this room today. You have all fought for something that you've wanted. And in those transitions where you're scared and you're just not sure what's next and you're not even sure what you're good at or what you're even, what's your best value? If you're a mom and you just sent your kid off to college and you've just spent this whole time dedicating to your family and sacrificing for your child and now you have a lot of time to focus on you and you don't know what's next and you're not sure what you're good at, well, I'll tell you what you're good at. You know how to multi multitask with the best of them. You're a disciplinarian, you're a leader, you're a great budgeter, you've got a ton of valuable skills. You're an entrepreneur, you just left your corporate job, you're a risk taker, you make great decisions. And what I want you guys to know when we leave here today is that nothing we do in life is wasted. You are already valuable. And there's always an opportunity to reinvent ourselves, to be another self, but we just must remember that we have to be brave enough. Thank you.